Hello everybody and welcome to my channel. Today I'm going to share with you what kind of amazing art supplies treasures I found in a tiny art supply store in Bulgaria where I was visiting recently. So if you're curious then stay tuned and keep watching. And believe me, it might surprise you. So I'm back home now and I'm going to show you what I actually got from the store. First of all, of course, I got this uh, art creation sketchbook. Let me quickly open it. I'm scared to accidentally ruin the sketchbook or the paper. Wow, that feels great. Take a look, isn't that beautiful? And oh, it feels amazing. Also, oh, okay, okay, that's actually different. Wow. So let me show you. This is the classical art creation sketchbook that you would usually see in the shop and they sell them in different colors. I love these sketchbooks dearly. I think it's amazing if you like to draw and to sketch and even use a little bit of watercolor or gouache because this paper can definitely handle it. And yeah, I think uh, the price quality combination is just great with this one. But this one, I thought that it was the same as this sketchbook, but just with the design on it, at least when it comes to cover, but it isn't. It's actually because this is a, well, it's not a hard, hard cover, but you can say this is a hard cover, but this one, this one is different. You see how flexible it is? I mean, it's not super soft, but still. Oh, and I love this red ribbon. Nice. Okay, let me take out the paper. Oh, isn't that beautiful? It is absolutely beautiful. And right in the store, I have compared if there was anything different, and it is exactly the same, the same number of sheets and the thickness of the paper so the quality should be the same but as you might have already noticed it has white sheets look because i heard some of the youtubers weren't that uh, fond of art creation sketchbooks because they have this uh, creamy color of the paper so it seems that our art creation listened to their customers and actually release the series with absolutely white paper. Okay, it feels firm. It's very, very smooth. Let me try and touch it side to side. Let me put it here. I mean, I know it's not the most scientific method of checking the paper, but it feels exactly the same. Thickness, smoothness, because it is very smooth, or maybe a tiny, tiny tooth to it. Actually, in a way, somehow this one feels a little bit thicker, maybe even if it isn't, but maybe of course I use this one more, so that one feels a bit more bendable. Just a tiny bit, but it also might be just me. But this feels amazing. And I don't think I saw landscapes formats before of the sites from Art Creation. But wow, that is absolutely great. You know what? Let 
let me just test a little bit with watercolors right away just to see how it performs and yes i know the the sketchbooks they're not purely for watercolors if you are into wet and wet and all those pure watercolor techniques the sketchbook is not going to work for you but if you are into urban sketching you know with the line and the watercolor kind of thing when you make a brief sketch and then you add a little bit of watercolor i think they're perfect especially if you just want to practice and train also i used um, my art creation sketchbook for gouache as well and that went great i mean barely any buckling and I just love them and then if you cannot paint on the back side well then you just use another one because you can do it with the sketchbook but just a second these are my core watercolors And I will use my Da Vinci brush, one of my favorite. And you see there is actually flow on this paper. And there is no plan to what I'm doing right now whatsoever. Okay, let's let's pretend I wanna paint a tree or something. So as you can see, yes, it buckles. It definitely buckles. I'm a bit worried to turn. And yes, you can see it in the back. But for sketches, it seems to be the same quality as their usual art creation sketchbooks. Well, I can see a little bit of a speckle here in the paper. Let me show it closer to you. You can see those tiny dots so maybe this is it. So I'm going to play around with it a little bit more to see how I feel. But you know, if I can't use it for watercolor, that's perfectly fine. After all, it's not a watercolor sketchbook per se. And, but just for sketching, I think, I think it's actually wonderful. It's bright white paper and the design is incredible and the format is nice and you can lie flat as well. It's it's great and if this is the result of them listening to their customers, to their feedback, because it was mentioned more than once or I heard more than once that people say, nah, it's a cream paper, I'm not that fond of it. I'm perfectly fine with it. I think it gives a very special touch to the sketches and a very special feeling to sketching on uh, this slightly creamy paper. I mean, sometimes I also even just use it for notes just because I think it feels amazing and I, I really, really love it. But I do understand how some people would want bright paper and it's great. Wow, I'm so, so happy about it. I think it's a job very well done art creation or royal talents who are making it. Exciting. Okay, now, uh, Let's move to the next one. So the next piece I got is this watercolor journal from Rembrandt. And it is 200 grams per square meter, cold press, medium grain, 25% cotton, 30 sheets. And I just 
I've never seen anything like that in local in my local art stores to be honest even in the online art supply stores that i usually use and the same with the sketchbook from art creation i wonder actually if sometimes brands test out new lines on you know in a single country maybe for example and then they see how it goes if it picks up i don't know but i haven't seen the sketchbook I haven't seen any sketchbooks from Rembrandt in my store. So when I saw this one, I got very curious, 25% cotton. I'm not a big fan of mixed like cotton paper when it comes to sheets of paper. The exception is Fabriana, 25% cotton paper, 200 grams, absolutely love it. But I'm just wondering if it, if it would work for sketchbook and I'm much less picky when it comes to sketchbooks when it comes to the paper so let me take it out if i can okay that way nice and there's a small line but that's just from the packaging i'll see if i can remove it later on it feels it feels great very very nice to touch nothing on the back so very simple very classy with this golden r Wonderful design. Oh, let me remove this one. Wonderful design. Okay, okay. The green is quite well pronounced. And at least by the feel of it, it seems to be two-sided. So it's the same texture on both sides. Let me see if I can show it to you. Yeah, I think it's possible to see it quite clearly on camera as well. The sketchbook can lie flat. No issues here. Perfect. And I actually have a sketchbook from Fabriano. And there I don't even remember. I don't think it said anything about cotton on the label because this is just uh, my own painting that I printed out and just put on the sketchbook. So I do believe this is actually 100% cellulose, but I might be wrong. I'm not sure. I, I don't remember. But when I looked at Rembrandt, I did think that it was similar. Wow, well, the sizes are identical. Can you see it? It's absolutely the same size same thickness the cover is different though so they're not the same fabriana has a more pronounced cover which i don't know if i i like more or less because i'm already very fond of the sketchbook it's uh it's beautiful it it can handle anything seriously so and this one well let me see also the paper if it looks similar hmm I actually think it might. It has exactly the same feel to it at least. Okay then. So did I just buy the same sketchbook but branded as Rembrandt and with a slightly different color? Let me know in the comments down below if you know anything about it because I'm, I'm a bit surprised. Not that I'm upset though because the sketchbook from uh, Fabrian, like I said, I don't see it that often that people talk about it, but this sketchbook is actually amazing. Seriously, you, you can do whatever you want. It can handle many layers and I used it with intense pencils, with watercolors and some painting that I didn't like. I already covered it with gesso, so I'll also give it a go and maybe uh, try to use it with acrylics as well. So I'm using it for everything. So of course, if it's the same, then it's not bad, but it's just, uh, surprising you know <laughs> because it does feel i mean i'm looking at the grain and maybe maybe in fabrian it is a little bit less pronounced but at the same time the pattern seems to be exactly the same exactly the same please let me know if you know anything about it i i find it quite curious and if you by any chance are working with Fabriano or Rembrandt, please let us know <laughs> what's going on there. Because these are two 
very known brands though i do understand that rembrandt is more known for the paints right and fabriano is known for the paper so okay in a way it does make sense if rembrandt decided okay of course we want to provide paper as well so when we kind of know uh, where some of the papers made by fabriano maybe maybe they have an agreement with fabriano to provide them with the paper and then they made uh, their own cover and design for it so that it could go with their paints that could be the case i mean i and i understand it because if they are specializing in paints then entering paper let's say production it's a very different field right or at least that's what i would expect however i do know that rembrandt they also send just sheets of paper as well i wonder if that looks like fabriano paper again if you know anything about it if you had a chance to compare fabriano paper with rembrandt paper let me know but uh, actually generally i think it's not necessarily bad because then you know if you buy it from rembrandt you get the quality of fabriano paper which which is a big plus so if somewhere you see that this is sold as a kit let's say paper some paints i don't know brushes then it's actually not might not be a bad idea to get it because then you wouldn't be worried well i know that the paints are great but you know the paper might be total crap no it's a good paper that might be made by fabriano unless both fabriano and rembrandt use somebody else to make the paper for sketchbooks but i think that would be a bit odd when it comes to fabriano because this is what they are famous for so uh, in their case outsourcing would be a bit peculiar but that's my just my opinion just my thoughts enough of rambling let's move to the next item and the next thing i got is this pencil case ah so beautiful oh that feels so so nice wonderful quality and they just had it in the shop as a separate piece oh that's very reflective so <laughs> But that just feels incredible i must say really really nice and i'm not quite sure yet what i'm going to use it for i was thinking maybe just to use it for paints and yeah if you see too much here then i might blur it out a little bit here apologies for that but uh, yeah i thought that oh oh wait it's actually double <gasps> look at that i did not expect it i can see small damage here though but it might have happened also because uh, i only had my carry-on for the trip so everything went into my carry-on so it might as well have been me who has damaged it a little bit but i really did not expect it so wow maybe maybe imagine if i could make like a watercolor palette maybe with paints here and then on top to have you know some brushes well i don't know if it's big enough for the brush well not for the usual brush but then some pencils you know erasers and then the full watercolor kit that could definitely work or i will just use it for pencils as well because i got my own small collection of pencils that i like like for example i like uh, i like these ones from stedler and also this one from sosnekrene and i also like this one from uh, pilot it's a, a usual pencil but i actually think it's it's quite nice and also a couple of colored pencils that i could carry with me hmm curious so but i'm definitely going to use it for something because it's just incredible and i didn't see anything like it in my art stores beautiful and the last but not the least i also picked up this um what a color box as they call it but anyway i picked up this pen set from uh, rembrandt and it contains 12 pens oh it actually says it even has a sable brush i, I actually didn't pay attention to that but anyway this is a mono pigment set so each paint consists only out of one pigment so in my the way i see that this is a mixing palette that they came up with and I tried Rembrandt colors only once. I had one tube that was um, sold on a big discount. It's like the leftover thing that they had. And I really liked it. The color was amazing. 
there was a bit of the separation with the binder but i also think because the tube was so very old so i really really wanted to try them so i decided to <laughs> treat myself to it and yeah oh, it looks very very nice and it's actually now i realize that except for this pencil case everything else is by uh, royal talents hmm makes me wonder but then again they they make amazing products so guys thank you very much for it it's i'm truly enjoying them so but let me remove this oh it's beautiful i really like the simplicity of this logo whoever came up with it great job so let me see oh, it feels nice Oh, it says something looking at the world behind the reality feeling how the elements adapt to a single will working with colors and techniques that give shape to this deepest of inspiration this is art wow well i couldn't agree more to be honest oh this is lovely this is such a nice touch i love it when they think about the details oh. Okay, the box seems nice there is a ring which I, I usually how do I use it I know I usually use it like this when I paint outside very good feel oh and the first thing I see because in a way this shape really reminds me the um, tin that I have from Schminke maybe you have seen it in one of my previous videos and there the edges they are so sharp that i actually had to put a washi tape on them just not to cut myself and the same here but on this palette the edges are rolled so it's safe and the same here so the paint actually won't flow on the side rembrandt great job this is a really great job it's a little bit funny with the packages though now i can see one is upside down and this one has a slightly different design. Oh well, I don't care. Maybe they were really in a rush <laughs> with this specific <laughs> set. Well, then it just only makes it special. I'm fine with it. I'm fine with it. I can see though that you can't put an extra row here. So this is what it is. Can I get it out? Yes, I can get it out. Though to be honest, I rarely use it. I don't think I ever use this space, but maybe maybe i will move them to here and then i can add extra paints if i uh, buy more pens from them i'm not really planning though at the moment to be honest because i have my daniel smith collection that's pretty big i have my white knights collection that's also pretty big and that i use a lot when i experiment but you never know who knows and i recently tried Cinelia colors that as it appeared i absolutely love for complicated pieces that require lots of layering it's very very difficult to beat them but uh, oh, they feel a little bit different this one feels a little bit flatter this one feels a little bit fuller you know what let's let's unpack it and see how they look like right So yes, this is the way they should be. And now let's open them up and put them in the paint, in the, in the tin. I know some people really like unpacking them. They say it's like unpacking candies. You know, I'm not one of those people. I really couldn't care less. Okay, R, that's nice. So it says R, which stands for Rembrandt. I suppose 254, let's see if you can see it. That's a nice touch because then I'll actually know the pigment and I don't need to be worried if they get mixed up. Do you like unwrapping watercolor pens? Please let me know in the comments. And I really hope, or it's not that I hope, but if you also do not like spending this extra time unpacking them, 
let me know. Then I'll know I'm not alone. It's always nice to know that you are not alone. Out of 148. Oh, that's very nice. I really like that there are the number of the pigments on the pen. Oh, here are also the names. Actually, the one that stands out. Ah, okay, on the side. Sorry, guys, I didn't notice. This one is permanent red medium. Let me see if I can still read the other colors. So this one is permanent lemon yellow. This one is Ezo yellow deep. I've never even tried that color. Not permanent lemon yellow, but I tried lemon yellow, but I haven't tried Ezo yellow deep. And what's this? I kind of tore it apart a little bit. Permanent Madra Lake. Ooh, this is nice. So this one is permanent red medium. And this is French Ultramarine. This one is cerulean blue and it's not a hue, so, uh, so pretty. I wonder how it's going to re-wet because cerulean blue has this problem sometimes. Okay, Viridian, real Viridian, not yellow green, but Viridian, wow. I'm very excited to try it out. And this one is fellow green yellow. And it is a sick single pigment. Fellow green yellow. I, I never even heard of it. Raw sienna. Oh, I'm so happy they included raw sienna. I'm not a fan of yellow ochre, for example, because it's quite opaque. But raw sienna is hands down one of my favorite colors. I think it works great for landscapes. Burnt sienna. This one is greenish umber. Fair enough. And the last but not the least, Lamp Black. And I guess I can still add two more pens here. Well, they are a little bit wobbly. I do think that eventually I'll just Take this one out and stick them here with a take a tape or anything like that so it doesn't make that noise. I'm not very fan of it, especially if you take it with you somewhere for hiking, though this one might be a bit too luxury for hiking, but at the same time, this is a mix instead. I, I do think that this was the idea because we have cool and warm yellow, cool and warm red, blue, green couple of convenient brown colors, amber, and even the black color. So and let me take a look at the brush. It says it's number four, Pure Red Sable, Royal Talents. It's tiny. It's really, it's really tiny. <gasps> a 
And now what happened? I put it in and I lost it in my jar with water while I was mixing with it. So give me a second. So I have recovered the brush from my water jar, but that is a bummer. Yeah, it's so, it's not secure at all. Seriously, it's so easy to get it out. And yeah, it does seem to be real fur and very thin point. So I do think it would work. Actually, I believe it would work great for details, but this, this is an issue. I actually think I'm gonna just glue it permanently. Would it still fit? And then it wouldn't fit, but then I would just use it as a detail brush. You can't go wrong with a good detail brush, but eh, you know, not entirely thought through, but oh well, it's okay. Just know what you're getting. If you're counting on getting an amazing small travel brush, well, it is still small and would fit many pencil cases, I suppose, but be aware. And now let's just uh, make a small swatch of these colors because I'm very curious to see how they behave. I'm gonna be using again my Excel mixed media sketchbook that now is uh, my test and swatch book. Nothing serious, just for me to know what I'm working with. But I'm gonna use a different brush. I'm gonna go back to my uh, Da Vinci watercolor brush. I do think Da Vinci make amazing brushes. And now let's see how they perform. Oh, of course, not how they perform, but at least how they look and feel. Lemon yellow. Paints feel very buttery. I can also see that they're very transparent. This is Ezo Yellow Deep, I believe, and it's not as uh, pigmented. I mean, it is just very transparent, so it's a matter of taste, I suppose. This is a very nice shade of red, very nice cool red. And I'm not saying the names because, to be honest, I don't quite remember <laughs> how the, what these ones were called. So uh, when the paint is dry, I will write on top of it and I'll show it to you again. But this one is uh, Ultramarine. Classical ultramarine, rather transparent. Though I didn't pre-wet the pants in any way, and they re-wet beautifully. Even actually, cerulean blue is very nice to re-wet. Wow, I'm impressed. Ah, oh, and that is that is a gorgeous color. Absolutely gorgeous shade. The color of the summer sky, and now viridian. A bit harder to pick up, but that's very usual for the reading. And it's so transparent. But it's still supposed to be an amazing mixing color. But this is very transparent. I like pigmented colors. I don't mind dulling them down with more water. But on the other hand, I also know that sometimes I pick up way too much color and then I can't layer anymore and then it looks too heavy. I guess it wouldn't be the case with Rembrandt paints. So this one was Thello Green Yellowish, I believe. Raw Sienna. That's very transparent. It really takes some effort to pick up some pigment. Hmm, interesting. The pigment load is very low. Burn Sienna. That one was greenish umber, very transparent. I don't know what to think about it, to be honest. 
It might be, of course, that there was something on top of the paints to protect them a little bit. Because I... Wow, okay, the, the black is very pigmented. Black is amazing. <laughs> very nice, the slam black. But this... I don't know what to think about it. Seriously. I need to use them a little bit more because I heard once that one uh, of the artists experienced an issue that uh, she has tried the paints and it just wasn't working because they were also like kind of eh. And then half a year, even a year, a year later, she decided to give them a go again. And she was amazed that actually the colors were nice and bright. So it might, it might be because there was something on top of the paints to protect them. And then it got washed off and then the paints were amazing. Maybe this is gonna be the case with this. I really hope so because otherwise this burnt sienna and raw sienna that's like no, non-existent. Even ultramarine was rather weak and that's definitely a very different experience than when I tried Rembrandt from the tube. That's for sure. You know, maybe let me try this as a yellow deep again because now it was soaking in water for a while. Okay, now it's getting much creamier. Okay, okay, now... Oh, I see. So it is the case the same with Rembrandt. Now it's very, very highly pigmented. Okay, can you see the difference here and here? Now, now I see. Okay, so be aware that if you're buying pen sets from Rembrandt first time, you probably need to wash them off a little bit with whatever it is on the top or if they do need to soak in a little bit. But let me maybe add, you know, a little bit on top of the first color just to see what it would actually look like. Something like that. Because I couldn't believe that Rembrandt would be so pale. I mean, they are very known in the industry and they might not be the favorite paints for everybody, but that's definitely not a quality you would expect for the money they cost, right? Now it's much better. Cerulean blue was beautiful right away though. And now I can feel it getting even creamier. Very beautiful color. Let's give a go to Viridian. That one is still rather transparent. But then again, this is a natural version of Thalo Green and Thalo Green is usually quite overpowering in all the mixes. So maybe, maybe that's why they decided to go with Viridian instead. We'll see how it goes. And if you use Viridian in your work pretty often, please let me know how you do it. Because some colors, I just don't know where they use, like Buff Titanium from Daniel Smith. Almost everybody has this color in their palette and I, I just wonder, where, where does it go, where do they mix? nice this is a nice bright color okay once again we're gonna try raw sienna burnt sienna because this was a disaster it still takes a little bit of effort i feel to pick it up on the brush mm, it's still quite transparent A bit better, but still transparent. I mean, transparent in a way that it's not very loaded with pigment because I don't mind transparency at all. I love transparency. But I do also need to know that I can get the depth in the paintings when I need to and the color. Well, this is, this is better now, definitely better. Raw 
amber greenish. A little bit on the weaker side, but at least I can feel that I'm picking something up with my brush. Okay, that looks much better now that paints uh, had a chance to soak a little bit in water. Oh, I forgot to do it with the lemon yellow. Yeah, pretty nice. Very big difference with Ezo Yellow Deep, that's for sure. So I'm definitely going to paint more with Rembrandt paints just to see how they behave. I cannot say that the first impression is that great. So we'll see. I really hope that it was just some something on the paints to protect them. Or maybe they do really need to get soaked a little bit in water to show themselves in full beauty. Of course, I just need to see how they would actually perform when I paint. Would I get too annoyed that each time I need to make those extra moves with my brush to pick up extra pigment or maybe it's gonna work out amazing and they're gonna layer great and the mixes will be beautiful i'm not going to experiment with the mixes today because that would be a very long video i just want to play around with them by myself but have you ever used rembrandt paints please let me know what's your experience if you have any kind of tips and tricks and what do you think about them and yeah, please share with me. I'm very curious to hear because it's actually, it's not that much information that I could find online, especially about the different Rembrandt sets. So yeah, but let me know how you feel about them. I would be very curious to hear it. Thank you all for watching this video and for staying till the end. And if you enjoyed it, then please remember to give it a like and subscribe to my channel. And if you would like to learn more about what I use for my paintings and how I'm paint, then uh, make sure to watch my next video. See you there. Bye.